If you would like to purchase this product, use the product link in the description below. It will help support our channel. Or you can support us on patreon.com forward slash Simply Ham Radio. Thank you. Okay, we got a new product to review. Let me get the box open. And, well, you already know from the title what it is. But let me get the box open and let's get it out. Okay, we got the channel mascot, Louie. Louie's got to prove of everything here. Louie, do you approve? <laughs> TYT TH UV88 analog two way radio. This is the Balfang UV5R killer. This thing is going to smoke any Balfang. For the full credit disclaimer, I bought this radio from Buy Two Way Radio with my own money, own funds, so there's no sponsorship, there's no monetization, no funds steering my video review. If it's available at Amazon, I will provide a link there. I do have affiliate links for Bridgecom as well. If there's any ratings that Bridgecom interests you, please use my affiliate link. Help support the channel. So anyways, we got the dual band. There's my serial number. Frequency 144 to 148, 136, 174. That's receive, uh, transmit 42450. Dot matrix. You know, that is a nice box compared to the Balfang UV5Rs. Oh, very well laid out. Got an owner's manual. A TYT verification, pass quality control. I do have a couple 3200 milliamp batteries on order. So this comes with a little dual band antenna. The charging cup, 1400 milliamp battery, and the radio itself. It's supposed to have 200 memory channels. I did go to tyts888.com, their website, download the CPS, computer programming software, for this radio. Or if you want to use Chirp, Chirp works as well. Okay, to program this, you will need the TYT programming cable, or if you have the Balfang, programming cable, the genuine FTDI with a little chip in there. It's the same plug. They all share the Kenwood plug. So they even work on a Kenwood. So I do have a cable, so I didn't get a cable, which was unneeded. So anyways, let me get this out, get it assembled. Hopefully the battery has a charge. We'll hook it up to the computer programming software. For buy two-way radio, wants three dollars for each individual belt clip. So if they're compatible with the TYT MD380, I bought a five pack a few years ago when I had a pair of those. There's no seal around that. Should be the silicone seal. Yep, right there. Back at a radio. Anyways, let me get this together. Like I said before. Okay, this one had to be a little puzzled. Got the two square holes there on the bottom of the battery. That goes into there. Basically, it slides in, and there's your little battery release. It's not up here where it's going to get broken, so hopefully that's a little more secure. The problem is these little tabs right here on the TYT MD380. I broke several of the cases and then had to buy a new case and replace it, tear it apart. Let me dig out that TYT MD380 and show you. But anyways, it does have an LED light. <laughs> and what is cool, it says SMA, or well, that's an SMA female, but the antenna is an SMA male. So in this case, I can either use the stock rubber ducky, somewhere I have a Nagoya NA771, and well, this one's SMA female, but I do have another SMA24 I could put on here as well. Just want to show it side by side to the TYT MD380. It's almost similar shape and dimensions. Let me turn a light on this. There we go. I got the uh, UV88 next to the TYT MD380. This one's in a VHF version. I believe it's a VHF or no nope, UHF version. And uh, notice the similarities. These are all white. This is white and blue. The function, they call this one A and B. That one's a menu or a 
backspace. The screen's bigger on the TYT MD380, but that's a nice screen as well. A lot clearer, a lot sharper than a UV5R. And here's those little tabs right there. That's my makeshift job fix cure, which fixed it, kept them from breaking. Just put a little smear of JB Weld. I guess you could use two part epoxy over the top of it as well. And that kept those tabs from breaking. The stress of the battery snapping in, in and out would weaken that plastic and it would break. A little bit of JB Weld over it, it never happened again. Okay, so let's talk about the microphone jack where you're also going to plug the programming in. This bends down. You know, the Anytone flip back has a little stirrup. This is the weak link on the TYT MD380s I had. You can actually take the case apart and replace it if you want. So, Anyways, there's the uh, connector. It's just a regular Kenwood style connector. Nothing special there. But I do like the looks of that. Nice commercial look to that radio. Okay, there's only one knob to turn it on and off. The top button turns the light on. Guess I should probably read the manual, huh? Okay, I think you've seen that screen change. AA1PR. That's a repeater over New Hampshire. There's nothing close around to that frequency around here, so at least I ID'd. Let me shut the light off so you can see the color of that display. Focus, focus, focus. It's a nice crystal, like, Mediterranean, <laughs> Caribbean blue color when it stays on. Before I program it on the computer, I want to see what the menu, menu. consists of. I think it's going to overpower the camera. Menu. Set. Block level. Power. Squelch level. Mode. Set. 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 Eight. ID. T-O-T, busy, lock, box, set, program, eight, receive, Roger set, beeped. scan, mode, key, lock, voice, display, set, bolted, display, name, code. And let me hit the red button there. Escape. And a few items in the menu I'm going to specifically talk about. I'm not going to talk about them all. But dual watch. It's not a true dual band to s receive. But it does give you a dual display, so you can have two different frequencies and two different displays. I have yet to determine that it can hear two things at the same time. I don't think it can. There's actually a PL scan and a digital code scan. Now, being ham radio operators, maybe you're going to use this for a scanner or listening. That may be a viable option, something that's actually worthy to have. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different numbers of the scramblers. I didn't go into it in too depth. We can do a later video. But being an amateur radio operator, I cannot use a voice scrambler, some kind of digital encoding, to encrypt your signal. So I don't know what this would be in a so-called amateur radio that TYT is marking in this radio as, but I don't know if you can use that in a private sector. Maybe a security company or who would want scrambling technology, but definitely not an amateur feature. I also want to make note, mine came with a radio version 1.36. The software I downloaded from TYT888.com gives you the new firmware 1.37. However, following the instructions, hooking the radio up to the programming cable, I cannot get it to upload uh, to write to a radio 1.37. It sees it. It sees the COM port just like it does in the computer programming software, but I cannot get the new firmware to take. I don't like this voltage feature. Always kind of cool to watch your voltage. I have yet to figure out what's nominal on this thing when it starts getting low. I think it's probably right around 7.1, 7.2. So, anyways, fully charged. I think I seen another day 8.5. Uh, Again, this thing came out of the box. I didn't charge a battery. I probably should have charged it before programming, but let's get back to the video. 
have it reading from the radio the first time using the TYT software, not Chirp. Is there anything in it? Doesn't look like it. There's the screen's a little bit dark. Writing Killington UHF repeater, your Rutland VHF repeater to the radio. Let's disconnect it from the programming cable and see if we can make a QSO. Vermont. AA1PR testing out a new radio. Anyone around for a uh, signal report? Over. The volume's loud. There's no volume display on the screen. Okay, yeah, the golf mic station. I uh, apologize. I uh, accidentally hit a key on this new radio and had to figure out how to get back. Um, AA1PR, our name is Mike here in Rutland. Uh, just testing out a new TYT THUV88, a little uh, uh, dual band uh, 5 watt HT. Uh, over. AB1 UGM. Um, yep, yeah, we are. Uh Actually traveling through, heading back to Barrie. We're on uh, Route 4, heading up by, we're around Pico right now, and I've never actually uh, used this repeater. Uh, I keyed it in to my uh, mobile radio because I knew we'd be traveling down through here on our way down to uh, uh, Connecticut, and we're on our way back for uh, uh, heading home. Okay, well, nice to make your acquaintance. You don't mind if I uh, use part of this conversation in a YouTube video, would you? Oh, and your um, your HT radio sounds pretty good. I I hear a little bit of scratchiness, but I don't know if that's okay. Just finished up a conversation with Alex KB1 UGM. Seems like a very nice gentleman. Him and his son has uh, North Lake Wood Shops here on YouTube. So if you're into woodworking, check out his channel. And I'll post part of that conversation of uh, Arcuso here in the video. Um, but anyways, it worked. He said I was a little bit scratchy. But then again, he was just breaking the ridge of Pico, going down the backside towards Killington. So I know the Rutland 045 repeater isn't the greatest up towards there. And going down the backside, he got really spotty. And apparently, he was still able to hear me through the power of the repeater. So... Uh, TYT works. Uh, a couple things I want to see if I can fix in the programming. The backlighting. Uh, I don't know if I want a courtesy tone before and after, but I guess I'm used to that with the Anytone ATD878 uh, UV Plus with Bluetooth. I have a tone when I transmit and a tone I in key to let me know the channel is clear. So I guess it's been a while since I've been on the analog FM and <laughs> got to re hone those old skills. Uh, but anyways, uh, seems to be working well. I'll leave it on. I'll program in the weather channel, maybe some uh, scanner frequency stuff, and we'll do a little video here on and off throughout the night of it in uh, scan mode once I figured out how to uh, enact scan. So, a uh, little LED light. Interesting concept. Oh, the LED light here. AA1PR testing. When you go transmits red, when it receives its green. And this thing will do FM broadcast your radio station receive. So if you're hiking, like say here in Vermont, up and down the Appalachian Trail, out fishing, you're far enough away from your vehicle, but you want to have an HD with you. And in the meantime, when there's nobody on the radio, you want to listen to FM broadcast. Maybe here in Rutland, uh, 105.3 or 94.5, and in New York, 106.5 WPIX. You can listen to those, so... I'll have to figure those out at a later date. We'll do a video on it. And uh, as I figure out little uh, quirks of this radio and the programming parameters and make friends with it, we'll get more videos out. But there's basically a quick unboxing and a quick QSO. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Patreon. Use our Amazon link to purchase this product. It helps give us a little kickback to the channel. 
there's anything you want from Bridgecom, use our affiliate link there. It also helps support the channel. And I'm working with some other retailers to see if we can get a product code out to you, the viewers. 7-3, folks. Have a good day. Be safe.